Charlie and Todd for G66. Welcome to another Tuesday Tone Tip. Today, we are on the FM3, the latest firmware, firmware 4.01. We're just gonna have some fun with the delay block. You can see I've got a very simple patch at the moment, simply an amp and a cab together with a delay block currently in front of the amp. I'm using the AC20 12AX7 treble amp model, stock settings, and I am using one of my own cabinet impulses here. This one is a variation of the normal cab that I use. I've just baked in some parametric EQ settings in there. So I've just loaded the IR and the cab block is at the stock settings as well. This particular IR is up on Exchange for free if you wanna try it as well. So let's just hear the core tone to get started on my Strat. <laughs> Awesome, I love the AC20 models for that kind of sound with this particular guitar. So with that, that kind of nice chimey edge of breakup sound, let's put a delay block in front of there. There are two new delay types in here. We've got the graphite copy delay based on the MXR carbon copy. On channel B, I've got the other new delay type, the DM2 delay based on the Boss DM2. Both of those delays are based around old school BBD style chips. And part of the sound of those delays is dictated by that BBD or bucket brigade delay technology where basically you need to do a lot of filtering and some kind of clever electronic tricks with the delay block circuits to get those chips to behave nicely. And part of that is a so-called compander circuit, which is now modeled and included in the drive block here. So you can see the DM2, the graphite copy, and in fact, any of the analog delay types in here, like the deluxe mine guy have this new compander engaged at various settings. This also applies to the mono BBD and the analog mono type. So they've all had an overhaul in there, but let's start with this graphite copy delay. I have it set for 300 milliseconds of delay. The feedback's at 30% and the mix is at 30%. I wanna compare the sound of this with the DM2, with the deluxe mine guy. They're my, uh, well, they're three of my favorite delays. Put it that way, let's have a listen. <laughs> And that deluxe mind guy by default comes with some modulation on there. You can apply modulation to any of the delay types in there. So that's, I think, a good little introduction to the fact that these delays do sound different and they can have vastly different kind of character to their tone in there. I would just encourage you to choose a delay type that gets you the closest for the sort of delay you're looking at and then maybe tweak the modulation and the delay time and a few other little things in there. One kind of fun trick, especially if you're gonna run these after the amp and the cab, is to use the right post delay feature here. And what this is gonna do is it's basically gonna take your base time here, for example, 300 milliseconds. On the left channel, you're gonna get a 300 millisecond delay and then you're gonna get 300 milliseconds plus whatever you set this to here over here. So really easy kind of 300, 400 millisecond dual delay is just to turn this right post delay all the way up, place it after the amp and the cab and you will hear it in glorious stereo. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
that's a gorgeous sounding delay right there. Alternatively, you can place it in front of the amp because you're using a mono amp block. Of course, it's going to sum everything down to mono. Let's go back to that graphite copy delay and let's drag it in front of the amp because I want to show you a cool little trick to get these delay types to self oscillate. Let's set the feedback to 50% over here, and I'm going to set the master feedback to 120%. You'll see why in a second. Uh, let's turn the delay time up to about 600 milliseconds right there, and just have a listen to how this sounds in front of the amp. Lots of repeats on there at the moment, but let's do this. Let's take this feedback control and assign a controller to it. Let's right click it. I'm going to use a control switch. I'm going to use control switch number four and use any of the six control switches. What we're going to do is we're going to set the minimum to where we had it before around 50% and then we'll set the maximum to 100%. I have assigned a foot switch over here to control switch number four. I've set the foot switch type to latching so that when I turn it on, basically it is going to turn this delay from the minimum value of, you know, 40, 50%, whatever you want it, all the way up to the maximum. But remember, we've got the master feedback at 120%. So this is going to take the feedback and it is going to create a self oscillating loop on this delay. I'm going to want to turn the mix control on it down because this is really going to distort the amp. It's going to get crazy, but so many people love this sound. I love this particular sound. It's something that I've used on recordings still on before with uh, physical delay units. I remember using one of the big, you know, Moog delays. Uh, what one was that? It was awesome anyway, but they are so crazy expensive now, like to get one secondhand is almost as much as a new FM3. And you can kind of cop that trick using a control switch on here. So let's try that right now. This is what I'm talking about. <laughs> is a lot of fun. You could have hours and hours of enjoyment there. You notice that I was moving the mix and the master time with the mouse here. There's no reason why you couldn't assign, say, an expression pedal or a control switch to those controls in the same way I assign a control switch to the feedback. So there's a fun little tip in there to basically create self oscillation with these delays in here. It works wonderfully. Oh, it's so much fun. So much fun. One other trick that I really, really like for creating uh, kind of gorgeous stereo delays. Let's go back over to this deluxe mind guy. Actually, let's do this. Let's unassign this controller to the feedback. Let's select the stereo mind guy and let's place this after the amp and cab. I'm gonna set my tempo here to be a quarter note and I'm gonna set the left right time ratio to something that's not 100%. For example, if you set it to 75%, you're now creating that classic quarter note, dotted eighth note, dual delay. The reason I like doing dual delays like this is if I tweak the feedback on the left delay line, the right feedback will be compensated so that I get the same number of repeats on each channel. So this is my stereo delay sound now. <laughs>
that's pretty awesome. If I crank the feedback up, say to about 40% there, you can see that it's compensated on the left channel. Now I have this wonderful ambient wash. <laughs> Gorgeous, gorgeous. That is kind of my go-to sort of lead delay setting there, either with the stereo mind guy or the stereo BBD delay type. And one other thing I would say as a kind of general tip with delays, what I've found is that my go-to like conservative settings of having the delay around 20 or 30% generally seems to work. But if I am playing distorted guitar really loud and live in a dense mix, Having the delay really wet, like above 30%, but with a kind of darker sounding delay, like the Stereo Mind Guy or the Graphite Copy or the DM2, will help you actually hear the delays live. They can kind of just get swallowed up in a mix. Similarly, if you're just kind of playing around on your own and you've got this sort of Stereo Mind Guy set up with, you know, quarter note, 75% ratio on there, uh, bit of feedback. Maybe let's bring the feedback down to say 20% on this line right here. Uh, you can bring the mix down really low to about 4%. And this is a really nice alternative to using a reverb. It's just going to give you a kind of general ambience. Check it out. <laughs> It's so subtle, you know, maybe, maybe 8% would work better on this particular sound. It's just a little bit just a little bit on there, you know, uh, it's really easy to overlook the fact that, you know, if I was building a traditional rig with pedals, I really used to like having a kind of general ambient delay on there that was synced to the tempo. You know, if I was kind of just chunking away playing rhythm guitar, it can add a nice sort of level of, uh, I guess, thickness or some depth to your playing without the overt uh, kind of reverby quality of reverb, whatever that means, you know, uh, you can kind of just play along and especially if the delays are tempo sync, then they're going to sit really nicely uh, with whatever you play. So I'm kind of going to just tap the tempo in over here and then I'll play something around that tempo. <laughs> see what I mean there and play around with the feedback on there just so you get the right amount of ambience happening or try some ratios that aren't 100 or aren't 75%. 50% works great, 66% works great, uh, you know, 61.8% works great if you want to do a golden ratio thing. So a kind of grab bag of delay suggestions for the latest firmware on the FM3. If you have any other questions about where to download the firmware or how to update, I will put some links in the video description. As always, thank you so much for watching this Tuesday Tone Tip. If you have any suggestions for future Tuesday Tone Tip videos on the FM3 or the Axe FX3, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next Tuesday.